Greetings, epic adventure seekers. Welcome to your guide to demystifying your world. I'm Allie Bierman, and you are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical, connecting heart and mind. If you've not yet done so, please leave a rating and a review. And it's really easy to do that now on our new website. You just go down below any audio you listen to, and there's a nice little button that says leave a review. And that website is let's get metaphysical show.com. Today's guest, Daniel John Hanneman, takes you places no one else does. You definitely want to put away any of your multitasking and focus in. Before jumping in, I wanted to remind you about the special gift I made you. Step in a new direction. You see, your life isn't going to change until you choose to make a change. First, you want to become someone you've never been who can take actions you've never taken. And that allows you to have things you've never had. And it'll all be down the show notes, step in a new direction. Daniel John Hanman has an extensive background as a professional counselor and certified hypnotherapist with combined business and professional backgrounds in energy scanning energy clearing, spiritual life coaching, intuitive business coaching, channeling, metaphysics, religious science, hypnosis, psychotherapy, motivational techniques, and personal business development systems. Part of a best-selling book series, Daniel has co-authored the book, Wake Up, Live the Life You Love, Living in Abundance, which featured internationally renowned legends, including Anthony Robbins, Dr. Wayne Dyer, and Dr. Michael Beckwith. Daniel is a creator of the Your Sacred Purpose that's unleashing the hidden greatest potential within world changing empaths, healers, and spiritual entrepreneurs by loving all of themselves, including their full power, their greatest gifts, and also their ability to deepen the awakening of consciousness on the planet while enjoying profound money success. He hosts a not the usual spiritual rock star podcast, and I recommend that you take a listen. I enjoy listening on his blog. I like to see the picture of who I'm listening to. And I also enjoy going into his Facebook group where you can interact and experience Daniel's lives. His shows truly open my eyes and my mind to things I thought I knew. And I didn't know some of these subjects and they're everyday important life subjects. I know them at all. So as I said, I highly recommend listening to his podcast. And if you come to the webpage, you get to see the visual because Daniel wears some cool shirts. All right. Now with heartfelt pleasure, I welcome you to our show, Daniel. Oh, Allie, it's just such a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for having me on today. Grateful to be your guest. Oh, I'm so excited because our energy was connected even before we met. I had your podcast and the blog page up for months on my computer before I actually clicked into it. And then we went to schedule chats together the first time. You already had your calendar open today. My calendar open the first time. You had yours open the second time to the pages that we wanted to schedule. It's like, what I love about that is we're all connected. And I think it's critical for people to understand we're not separate people. And I believe that's what causes issues personally and also across the planet when people feel that way. Absolutely. 
Absolutely, Allie. I mean, I agree with that. So 100%. You know, it's a lot of times what I've done is um, have people really step into that experience because we think we're just like these individual beings just kind of slugging it out in life kind of, right? And boy, we need a lot of personal development. We need a lot of spiritual development. We need all this stuff for our individual self. And yeah, we pray for the world and we do all this other stuff, but there's a sense of me and then them and the world and all this stuff. And the truth is, is we're, we're one and connected with everything and with each other. So when we get into a deep experience that I take people in through my workshops and uh, events like that, retreats, people come to, to me uh, to enjoy, uh, it just it just reminds me of this, like we get into that oneness field and we start tuning in from a place of not only individually, okay, what's your business, you know, who are you and all this stuff, but it, it, increasingly what I do at these retreats, I'm like, okay, where are we as a collective, as humanity, where are we right now? And when you we get into a connection, it sounds simple, but we get into a connection with that where people feel that oneness and they start realizing I'm not just some one individual being. I'm co connected completely to the whole of humanity and beyond. And because of that, I'm because of the feeling of not being alone anymore, you start to realize everything is connected. You're connected with source, you're connected with all humanity, all life. And it starts to put you more into that deep uh, connection of synchro destiny where there's no struggle and it's just a sense of things are unfolding. And when you experience struggle, it's because you're getting back into the ego. You're getting into, oh, me as an individual, I'm struggling with these issues, blah, blah, blah. And then it's not about, it's not personal. It's about what just needs attention that may be showing up for you to focus on, but it's not just for you, it's for everyone like when you go to love yourself when you go to do your own personal work on yourself you're actually helping to clean this up for the collective simultaneously i think this is something that is talked about sometimes but it's not talked about enough and realize you're not on your own and we're all in this together we really are in a deep deep way and we need to awaken more deeply to that truth thank you for saying that because like I never thought of that. When I'm running energy on myself, I didn't think of that, even though I have a friend who would do that for the whole world. So thank you for saying that. Now, when you do the energy scan for me, you are clearly tuning into my spirit. And what was so cool is uh, other people just what you just said they know it applies to them and that's what's so neat about being in your facebook community because everybody's like oh yeah that was for me too that was for me too and we're all one energy so it only makes sense for that to be everybody's truth uh when when i was reading all the details in your bio which i only knew some of them you have a really eclectic range of skills. So how long have you, I call it, danced in the realm of both business, but business combined with spiritually gifted individuals? That's true. That's true. I mean, I, I'm, I'm here to bring people out of the out of the closet in some cases, you know, there's a lot, many people I brought out of the closet with their spiritual healing gifts and their intuitive and psychic gifts. Um, I've, I had a whole academy for invincible healers for many, many years where I certified people and being able to do as such. And I don't know when this will air exactly, but whenever it does, I am going down that pathway of helping people again and I never really completely stopped, but like I'm coming back to 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 reach more and more people that are really up to powerful things, but still have not claimed their deeper power and gifts, uh, spiritually speaking. We have, and it's important, it's imperative right now that we awaken as light leaders, you know, the, the light leaders that we are, those light leaders that are listening right now. If you don't think yourself a light leader yet, I would encourage you to start thinking more that way. You want to be in that leadership place because leadership is sorely needed. We need people standing up, claiming all of who they are, including their spiritual gifts, and allowing themselves to bring them forth in the world and then learning how to get effective and sharing it in a way that can translate into sales, which means service. 
sales turns into a service because if we don't get the sales, we don't get to serve them. Because again, even if you try to subtract the money out, then you can only help so many people because you need to do other things for most of us in order to survive, <laughs> very much less thrive. So we have to learn to get masterful in utilizing our gifts to serve people and to sell and to bring awakening to everyone possible because there is a mass awakening happening right now. But the, and, with, and within that, there is so much of the old ego structures that are hanging out for dear life within us collectively, right? And, and then it shows up individually. So it's not the people out there that are trying to continue to control us. It looks that way. That is a story, a narrative. It's the controller inside us that's hanging on for dear life. And it shows up in the outer world. So by you deepening and working upon your own self and waking up more deeply to all who you are multidimensionally and with your spiritual gifts and everything and bringing those gifts out into the world, you'll impact more people's lives and awaken them to their own multidimensional selves while claiming the beauty of, of the 3D reality that's right here. And heaven on earth is here for all those that are willing to, to uh, wait, awaken to, to the truth of who we really are. And that's what it's really all about. As I, when I first started my energy work with people, I was giving it away. And then I realized that doesn't make sense to give it away because people don't value it when you give it away for free. And here I was helping them make their changes but they didn't honor it and continue to live in that new kind of energy. And I remember very many years ago, I was in a weekend class with T. Harv Eker, and he was talking about that group over there, there's a spiritual ones, and they're not interested in making money. And they weren't making money because there was a thought many years ago that spiritual work shouldn't be compensated and as you just said well to kind of paraphrase it your bank account reflects how many lives you're actually impacting and it's important to reach as many people as possible and the more money that you're making the broader your reach right Right. Well, yeah, exactly. Or at a minimum, you're yeah, you're impacting more people's lives and more deeply because the more people are willing to invest in your in your gift, your true gifts, your your greatest gifts, your greatest service, the more people are going to benefit uh, on average. Like I said, there's, there's always the cases, but usually those are cases where something is out of integrity, right? Either the person who's providing a service goes unconscious, it goes to unconscious manipulative programs to try to sell you something and or the other person on the other side and or, you know, the other person on the other side goes unconscious and signs up for things that isn't, aren't true for them, aren't right for them. And so then it becomes a mess. Then you work together and say, oh, I spent all this money. It didn't work out so well. And that's just a story, by the way, anyway, like we're infinitely here to gain from everything, even what you thought was a disaster, which was exactly what you really actually needed. So even when you do it unconsciously, it still is the opportunity for the, the deep, deep awakening. Everything is in its divine perfection. Yeah, we have an opportunity to not have to go the, the long path all the time. We can awaken more rapidly by being connected enough to realize what's really true for us and what's not true for us, and therefore offer all of ourselves, more of the truths of who we are into the world, which includes our full self again, with all our gifts, not just the spiritual gifts necessarily, but like for me, I had to claim like all my, my business gifts, so my personal development gifts and everything. I was starting to parcel it out. Well, you know, as we go into spiritual stuff, we're like, it's all about the spiritual stuff and that's it, baby. You know? And it's like, then you, then, okay, now, you, no, no, that's not exactly right. You know, it's what you call the spiritual stuff isn't the, what, all the only thing that matters. You know, like everything's spiritual, first of all. And then what about sales? What about the nitty gritty? What about the practical? What about all these things? And that's why I have this diverse set of skills that I bring to help people because people need integration with all these things. Are you awake? Are you doing things effectively in your business that makes sense strategically? I have a gift to be able to tune into all those things intuitively for you 
and help you uh, open up to who you are and monetize it and let it succeed and bless the world. That's what it's about. That was <laughs> that was an incredible share because it's something that I had to learn. And because the universe wanted me to learn some things I wasn't seeing, I had like two brain injuries. And it's all about, I had to go within, inside me, like you were talking about, it's not out there. And that's where I started to see, oh, the world doesn't live out there, except for how I see it out there. And it's, it, it was a gift to me. So I found true happiness when I was, uh, after brain surgery, I couldn't talk, I couldn't walk, I couldn't move, I couldn't swallow, and I was high. And now no matter what happens in my life, I know, as you were saying, everything happens for a beautiful and divine reason, and we get to grow because of what the universe says, yo, there's something here for you that you keep missing. So I have to keep throwing these people and events at you so that you can move through them. Right, exactly. I mean, I, I've tripped and fall uh, countless times like everybody <laughs> else. I mean, you know, like, wow, okay. And then people on the outside, you know, um, sometimes can see it for you if you, you're lucky, right? They're like, Oh my God, you keep falling, you know, slipping on that banana peel. Or, <laughs> or, you know, you keep, you keep, uh, you keep having the same experiences because you don't, you're not listening. You know, we keep trying to tell you, go this way, go this way. And I, certainly our, our guidance keeps trying, our intuition keeps trying to tell us, right? It keeps trying to tell us and then we don't listen. And then we wonder why things aren't working out. It's just, you're, you're not listening. You're caught in your own, your own patterns, your own conditioning. And so, is we can break free of that and more fully, deeply awaken, then we're able to see the gifts in everything. We start to see that what we call our blocks are actually just congested energy that are, are truly life-giving gifts that are within those packages. Like, I, oh, I feel I'm so, I'm just not worthy or whatever. Like, you know, that's a common one. But then as we tune into that energy and where that lives in your body, for example, we dialogue with that energy and we get deep to the deeper truth. You feel vast, you feel unlimited, you feel like you're magical, you feel like you can let anything happen. But that feels very threatening in some way, right? So if it feels threatening, then we shut it down. So no, that's what's happening for so many people. Now light leaders have to say it's enough. I'm not here to be drunk with egoic uh, you know, power to, to, to have dominion over people. I'm here to have a connection with source that I'm an unlimited infinite being that can experience love and empowerment for everyone. And I just want to experience more of that. And I want to serve people from that place. I'm going to serve what I'm here to serve from that place. I want to be experience the fullness of who I am. And that's what it's about. So what's the greatest glorious vision for my purpose? And to start embodying that, you know, on every level, the 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 beingness and also uh, the outer purpose. You know, what's your mission? What's your thing to do? Rock it out on every level. There's so many light leader, light worker type of people are like, I just want to be. I don't want to be. You know, outer world. I don't want to come out of my cave. You know, <laughs> that's the only place where they feel peace, right? If they go out of the cave, oh my god, now it's a mess. And it's like. Yeah, but that's where your freedom is. You have kind of come out of the cave. You've got to. Otherwise, you're going to just stay stuck in your in your little cave. And, you know, don't think you're going to get out of it by just, I'll wait till next life. Maybe, or maybe I'll, yeah, maybe I'll get to the other side just by hanging out in this life. And in the end, uh, somehow I won't have to come back. No, they're bringing you back. You're coming back. I hate to tell you, you're coming back. You know, you know, you can't do a spiritual bypass forever. You know, oh, if, as long as I'm in the cave, I'm fine. You've got to come out of the cave. You need to bring your full being into the world. Come to make the difference you have. Unafraid of knowing your the fullness of who you are and start rocking it out. And, you know, understand that there are, yeah, there's strategies, there's tactics involved along the way, but it all flows from presence. It comes from that waking place. All the knowledge and wisdom you need and resources will be added on to you. And to trust that and start taking the bold next steps now and not be concerned with the outer results or what you think the results are. It's all about what's happening within you, as you said, Allie. It's about what's happening within you within that journey 
that is the liberation for you and for all. That's, I, I wanna talk about that some more. I'm just gonna take a quick sponsor break. This podcast is brought to you by audible.com. I've been reading, listening, I love books, audible books since 2007. I have quite a library of them. And what I'm able to do is give you the opportunity to sign up, download a free book, have 30 days of free trial to look around to read the book, and whether or not you decide to continue with the program, you get to keep the book. And what's so amazing to me since 2007, they added a program besides the book that I buy every month. There are like a thousand books that I can choose. So I'm going through one after the other, after the other. And you get an opportunity to take advantage of that. And again, the link will be in the show notes. And I urge you to expand your world that way. So talking about, I wanted to mention, I've been doing some of your meditations and after that first brain injury, I couldn't be part of the world. And that's when I learned to meditate. And your meditations are so powerful. It's like my whole body vibrates. And I've never had that experience when I had somebody else leading the meditation. So I wanted to make people aware to be looking. That's one of the many things that you offer. Well, thank you, Ali, for sharing that. I mean, I suppose everybody's different, but I do consistently hear that from a lot of people that they experience, um, you know, all, all, all these years, all these decades, you know, multiple decades that I've been doing these meditations for people. Um, people love them, you know, they, they flock to the, to the meditations. And so I created that meditate, make money, um, meditation that you've been enjoying that I think we'll share more about maybe later but yeah I I just I love it just puts us in that connection right and then I'm just such a channel whatever needs to be said just comes through me I have my channel opens while I'm meditating and it just flows and it's it, it is it's beautiful for me to be a part of as well <laughs> to bring because there's transmissions there's people always say well, you say it's meditate, make money, Daniel, but we know that it's much deeper than that. So that's like, it's another comment I always get. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> and I don't know. All I know is I'm a channel. It's just coming through, whatever it is. So, And I want to jump on the channel that you do because you did an energy scan for me. And it's like, I've had people do energy scans before and it was nothing like what you did it was you tune right into what i had been thinking on my own and then you came up with some thoughts i never ever thought of them so i'm super grateful i'm just so grateful that i connected with you and i I'm really grateful that you're here today because I want to share you with all the people who haven't met you yet, because what you do, it's a gift and it's a gift for the whole world, as you said, and to awaken people to the fact that they're light beings. I don't know if the book is still in print, but I finally understood what a light being is when I read Bringers of the Dawn and it had a really clear description. So I said, Oh, I'm one of them, and the people I hang out with are too. And that's one of the things I'd like to have happen for the listeners of this podcast. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's my great pleasure. I mean, I opened up to this ability that I have of, of connecting. Um, you know, I. I I, I guess I, I look at it this way. We are, so many of us are intuitive that are probably listening. You know, a lot of us are intuitive. And, and for a long time in my life, people would say things like, you know, how did you know that? Or, you know, things like that would come along. And when I, when I was studying my master's in clinical psychology, um, I remember, you know, people were really profoundly blown away by how I could assess people, you know, how I could assess mm -hmm. the, the, the people. And I didn't, I didn't know, I, I didn't 
consider myself this intuitive person. I, I didn't know what it was. I just, I was able to understand what was going on. I could see people, right? I just knew it. I have the top students in our class, you know, coming come by to visit Daniel to get the guidance on their cases and stuff. And I was like, well, this is so cool. Uh, I'm like, why do you come to me? And I remember one person saying, well, you know, there's some people that just know what's going on, you know, like that's how it was put to me back then, right? And as it kept building over the years, it's just like, it's a spiritual awakening and studying metaphysics, hypnosis, and all this stuff. Um, I just got to a place where I was just, I was just, um, feeling so connected with everything. And I just had these deep experiences of like, when I had like with a crystal skull one time, I put my third eye on it and it just opened me to everything. And I was just like, I know everything right now. I like that feeling of knowing everything. And I, I was like, I know I can use this for the good. I can go deeper with this. And so I learned how to do this energy scan technique that I've trained, you know, many, many people around the world to do. So yes, I have a gift, but people can learn how to do these things. So that this technique, um, I've been able to serve people in profound ways, like I served you and, you know, people, it takes you to another level, another level of um, expertise and value and service that you can provide people when you're able to tune in in a deeper way. And it's something that uh, just takes some practice. It took me practice to get better and better with it. And once you have someone uh, perhaps that helps guide you with it, uh, you can strengthen it. I mean, I did it on my own. In my case, I learned how to do it. But, um, you know, it took me a lot longer to get to the level of expertise I got to on my own versus like people I helped along the way. So, um but yeah, it's 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 so it's so it's so magnificent that we're so infinitely connected that we can know anything at any time about anyone or anything. That's our capacity. That's our ability, and we can manifest anything at any time as well. It's available. It's possible. It, the the door is open. It's there. It just we just have to allow ourselves to let it happen if we really want to experience such things. And I think it's also important to have an awareness of your environment because the universe is constantly giving us and gifting us and messages and direction. And when you're open to it, you don't miss it. And that's part, I think, of why I just feel really good. Even if things are crummy, I still feel really good because I know I'm getting that kind of support. And I've just recently started working long distance, tuning in the way you do it, this is new for me. Because I was working for 25 years, I worked on people in my practice in person, but I can only work on just so many people that way. And I wanna be able to reach people all over the world. So it's like everything that you just said encourages me to persist on this path. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I always tell people you, you know, that, that wonder, it's like, not only can you do it, but you can do it at an even deeper level than you realize. I mean, once you get your mojo going, like what I did when I got my mojo going with it, I would have, uh, I had an online radio show. And like one time someone was on the board, even like just a type in board, you know, chat board or whatever. And they're like X, Y, Z. And they're like, Hey, read me. Cause I was doing readings that day. I'm like, Okay, great. Uh, I see you had a big trauma. You were on a red tricycle at two years old. You fell off of it and made you believe this and feel that or whatever. And, you know, it, it, it shaped your life in these ways. And then uh, the person writes back. Yeah, that was really traumatic. Me falling off that tricycle. I mean, like something that things super specific, even are possible for you to connect with when you claim your intuitive mojo and you you start to open and you start to trust that you can you're capable of such then you can bring on the mojo and oh my god anything you can you can do so many things for to help people not just know things but to bring healing too like to activate a healing for people which a lot of times even just an awareness you open in somebody can be so so profound and healing for people so it is. It's amazing. I'm so glad that you're saying yes and you're learning. You're the third person today that says, oh, my God, I'm working <laughs> remotely and doing all this crazy work to get now. I can't believe that it works remotely, indirectly, they were telling me. Like, they're kind of over it now, like, like kind of like you are, but, like, they're still kind of marveling at it, right? 
And it's like, yeah, folks, I mean, this is huge. We can, you know, remote, heck, I didn't even need to know their name. People used to say, do you need my name, a photo? And this, I'm like, I don't need anything. Just, <laughs> just, just barely point the way. I can tell you whatever you want to know. I mean, because it's there. It's not just me. It's just there. I can access it. And it's a matter of uh, learning how to access it. It's incredible. I'm just thinking I, I designed and built furniture and all kinds of things. And I'd have something in my mind. And if I didn't build it two, three years later, there it was being built commercially, exactly what was in my <laughs> mind. So uh, at that time, I believe there's a universal mind and we can all tap into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to mention I used to do hypnosis a while ago. And one day the client I was working with fell asleep and fell off the chair. Now I realized I was standing next to her, I caught her. But I thought, geez, some of my clients are bigger than me. I could get hurt, the client could get hurt. I never did hypnosis again. And I wondered if you have any interesting hypnosis stories this year. I sure do. I probably have multiple ones, but uh, I'll share one or two today. I mean, I don't have the one with someone falling off the chair. Actually, that one is is kind of unique to me. Like I, I used to work even in a hypnosis clinic, and I don't even remember people oh. falling. Off. Now, people fall asleep all the time, right? And yeah. People definitely drop out and fall asleep. That is not too uncommon. I've definitely had that happen with some of the people, even though we give them suggestions, right? You will stay awake. <laughs> well, so they still fall asleep sometimes. So it just goes to show we're not puppet masters when we're doing hypnosis. We're just giving suggestions. They may not always, uh, they may not always want to take the suggestion. So some people, that's what they need. They need to, they need to just drop out all the way, right? That's the best thing for them, perhaps. And I always tell them it's still working at some level, you know, some level. In my case, in my practice, I would always record too. So I always have at least a recording oh. in case they felt like, oh man, I fell asleep during that one part. Okay, here's a recording. You can do it again, you know, do your own self-hypnosis. So anyway, but yeah, let me share a quick, you know, you know story about that um, is, yeah, I remember like, uh, is it relates to what we're talking about. So I had a client that I was doing the hypnosis with as I was opening up to these gifts I'm talking about, right? It's tuning in. And then one of the, one of the, uh, one of the times I was doing the hypnosis with him, uh, you know, you guide people right into scenes sometimes just like a meditation, you know, very much the same, um, only maybe at a deeper level, right? Or a deeper level of uh, maybe connection. And then, and then we're in the scene and I'm like, okay, now there you are, this and that. And then, and then, and then, and then there's part, then there's hypnosis too, where you're kind of guiding them in the scene, but you're not completely, you know, putting it together for them. So as I, as I took him into one of those scenes, I just remember like, even though he, I didn't say what scene he's in, I could see the scene he was in. I could see into his subconscious mind and see where he was. I'm like, I see you. It's kind of creepy in a way, right? It sounds creepy. It's like, I could come into your dreams. I could come into your subconscious. But I was there. I was right there with him. And when I came out of the hypnosis, I said, um, I'm going to ask you a question. I know this is going to, I felt open enough for this person. I says, this might sound a little strange, but I'm just experimenting with, uh, you know, if, what's going on here, if there's any resonance in this. But while you were in hypnosis, where do you experience this? Because I wanted my, my mind, my concrete mind wanted evidence. And so he said, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what I was experiencing. And I was going on in there. And so we agree that the next time we did hypnosis, that I would enter into the scene and that we would do, you know, certain creative things together or whatever, you know, we play together. So we did that the next session. And uh, I don't remember the specifics of how it happened. Sometimes the deeper it goes, the less I remember, right? But I just remember doing that, and that opened up even that possibility. And I'd love to do more of that. I haven't done much of that since then. But um, you know, I'm like that reminds me. I'm like, oh, that was that's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool the way we could connect. You know, like like um, I can like I've sent uh, all kinds of messages to people, right? Like if I want, I needed to wake someone up and have them call me, like send them a message. Okay, like we can do we can do so many things, so many things that even go beyond any technology that we even have right now right we can transcend even the sense of we oh we're so limited we can't do what these computers can do we are far beyond that 
computers, all this stuff. We're the infinite intelligence itself. We can do anything. So never forget that. But yeah, that's one story I have for hypnosis. <laughs> wow, that's that's really exciting. I used to, <laughs> when I was married, my husband would never make a choice, like something as simple as what restaurant. And I got tired of always making it my choice. So I would just mentally <laughs> said my choice and the whole family would say well let's go there right, right. <laughs> right. i did that in psychotherapy too if i needed a client to go a certain way i'm not sure if that was ethical so i kind of stopped doing it but yeah, yeah. everything that you just said it's total reality yeah can i say something real quick on that sure yeah because yeah, the, I talk about that. That's one of the things I've given training people on, and, and I've had to you know back off of it sometimes because there are people that will misuse such abilities, right? Mm. It is true that there is a reason why there was such a backlash in the past. You're a witch. We're gonna burn you at the stake and all this. There was a reason for that. We need to consciously use our gifts. You know, we need to consciously use our gifts. It wasn't just that we're just randomly afraid of it only, but there are true concerns with such gifts, right? That we all mm. have, really. But, you know, is that we can utilize, it's just that people need to utilize them with the intention of doing good, you know? Um, so if you were there to support that client, I, I don't necessarily see any issue, right? Hmm. I, I've utilized those abilities to get out of, you know, trouble, right? The cops catches me doing something maybe I shouldn't have done. I'm like, Jedi mind trick time. All right. <laughs> okay, sir, you're fine. So carry on. You know, I literally have done that multiple times. <laughs> it, 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 it's fun. I don't know if it's ethical or not. I don't know that it's a, any big harm in that. Now, if you're like, hey, you will, you know, you're going to go, you know, jump off a bridge. To, I, okay, now we're talking. That's clear, right? It's not, there's no question there, right? Uh, and I have seen people use it in a ways I wonder if it's very, very well, right? They can manipulate people to not feel mm. well. Or, you know, those things are real. Like when people say black magic and all, those things are real. Those things mm. are real things. So that's why, too, why you want to train yourself and your consciousness so strongly that, such things aren't happening you to either anymore if you're already experiencing because people tell me all the time about how they're experiencing such things it's not that uncommon or that you know that you don't encounter that because those are things that people are afraid of has become more visible oh there's dark mm -hmm. players will come to me well if you believe that it'll happen right i mean so but what we need to do is realize we're we're whole or well you know and to trust trust your connection with source because when you do you don't feel like you need to meet up late you don't feel like you need to do weird stuff there's not that thing going on when you're really harnessing your your deeper potential and coming from that that place of integrity and just trusting yourself but sometimes you know we just need some training and some support and allowing it to happen that way for us and and trusting to let it come out of the box that it is trustworthy and we can live in a whole new world a much better world uh, by by harnessing the infinite within each of us because there's so much talent there's so much potential being wasted right now and one of my missions is to unleash that in people in the world that's that's just incredible i can't tell you how grateful i am to know you and to listen to all your wisdom what message would you like to leave with our listeners yeah thank you um again you're you are infinite you have capacities and abilities that are more readily available to you than your breathing i always say it's more readily available than to you than even your breathing or at least as available right i just say it that way did you make a point it is you don't even need to breathe in order to have access to these gifts. You, you actually don't need to breathe that much, right? <laughs> Quicker than your breath, it's there. It's always uh -huh. there. The, the gifts, the abilities, you know, the capacities, not just to do things and make things happen, but to just be awake. Because really all of it's an awakening game, right? It's all just fun. It's all ultimately like a fun game, right? It's like a fun game and we're awakening within all of it. That's the purpose of it. It's not that we, oh man, I can make something happen. If I want, I don't want a book off my shelf. I just tel telepathically put it in my hands and let it levitate over here. Okay, whatever. That's an ego, you know, thing. Like, you know, the reason it doesn't matter that you can do that. Well, it might not, right? Who cares? But there are very practical uses for these things that we can help each other, help ourselves 
and deep, ultimately it awakens us. It deepens our awakening. What does that do? It brings us back home into the, the fullness of who we are, the love that we are, and we're able to support each other in a grand celebration of love and light and laughter and fun and, and joy and freedom. Even when the, the bugaboo energy seems to show up back up inside of us, we become less and less um, taken down by it and we can transcend it and even integrate it. And so that we are even experienced more of the fullness of who we are. So anyway, so that's, that's all just, just, just trust to do, do the, the, the deepest, most powerful thing you're here to do. And just don't take no for an answer inside of yourself and, and, and watch the magic happen. I'm telling you, once you decide that you're going to start living in the way I've been describing during this program, man, you, you will flourish in a way that you, you might not have even imagined was possible. It's just beyond all belief what's possible. You know, Jesus said for a reason, these things are greater you shall do. It's completely true. True story. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> it's like, I need to breathe because I'm taking it all in and it's so powerful. I understand that you have a gift for everybody who's listening today. Yeah, yeah. Well, get her back to meditate, make money. And yes, it is much deeper than that. Yet we can meditate and make money. And it's so helpful. It's helpful to our practical self that is living in a 3D world, but we're meant to embrace, right? We want to embrace money. There's no differentiation between the oneness of the 3D and the oneness of 5D and beyond, which all one, it's meant to all be embraced, folks. Quit trying to avoid the 3D or stop mm -hmm. trying to avoid going to higher dimensional energy like some of you do, right? It goes on both sides. So we're meant to embrace all of it. One of the ways you can embrace all of it is getting in the free gifts. You know, meditate and make money. And it, what it does is opens up your energy, opens up your chakra energy a little bit and it lets you get guidance every day that activates energy as much as anything and does give your mind some mental answers to some things that are going you're wondering about that helps you to you know move forward and know what to do next in your business um, or in, you know with your purpose and allow more of a bandwidth of uh, fulfillment to just be turned on inside of you rather than trying to chase it, you know, or just not doing anything, right? Just constantly staying in the cave, but you follow the impulses, you feel the sense of, ah, the coast is clear. I can do that increasingly. So meditate, make money meditation. And then I know you have the link for that, for them to check that out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Free well, gift I, to you. Free gift. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being who you are and sharing who you are to make the world a happier, better place for so many people. I wanted to remind everybody to pick up Step in a New Direction, join our Facebook group, make a new friend, and watch for the events that I'll announce them there first. And also, there'll be a link in the show notes if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me of how we can make that happen. So I wish you a week filled with blessings. <laughs>